What is up humans, F here. This time we're in my bedroom because the house is a state and I didn't want to record in the living room. And it is time for a Strixhaven Marrow Teaser Bingo video. I probably got that out in the wrong order, but hey, whatever, we're here, let's do this. <laughs> So even though the official start date to the spoiler season for Strixhaven is um, Thursday the 25th, they did a sneaky little preview with a couple of planeswalkers from the set, which means that we get to have a look at the card um, that hits our, hits our bingo card, and um, we're going to have a quick talk about it. So, without further ado, Professor Onyx is a 6 mana value planeswalker for 4 generic mana and 2 black, with the static ability Magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy a spell, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Professor Onyx's plus one ability is you lose one life. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of those cards into your hand and the rest in your graveyard. Minus three is each opponent must sacrifice the power creature with the most power on their board. And her ultimate, which is a minus eight ability, is each opponent may discard a cup. If they don't, lose three life and repeat this process six more times. So, Professor Onyx, Mythic Planeswalker, awesome. Notedly, on her text box, instead of saying Legendary Planeswalker Onyx, it says Legendary Planeswalker Liliana, which means that Professor Onyx, also known as Professor Liliana, is actually the Planeswalker we're familiar with without... I need to re read a little bit wording for this. So this means that Professor Onyx is the Planeswalker that we are familiar with in a different form, which is cool. I kind of called this though. So going into the previous season, I went when uh, Mark Rosewater put out this video, or the, these teasers, I kind of predicted that it would be Liliana, um, the Planeswalker that we knew, but in a different form, because yeah. at the end of the Godforsaken, War of the Spark Forsaken novels, uh, novel, Novel singular, only one novel, thank fuck. Um, Liliana uh, went into hiding. She is a wanted criminal on Ravnica and also sort of to the Gatewatch in general. And uh, she is in hiding, uh, was helped out by Kaya, taken to the plane of Fiora, and assumed a different identity, also known as Anna Aiora, which. Um, this isn't that, so she's obviously decided that she doesn't like that identity anymore, doesn't want to be associated with the War of the Spark Forsaken novels, which I can completely understand, has moved off to Strixhaven and has her own identity as Professor Onyx there. Interestingly enough, uh, Liliana... Do we, do we call her Liliana or do we call her Professor Onyx now? Uh, I'm going to be saying Professor Onyx for this video, but if you could uh, share your thoughts if you so wish down below, um, that would be cool because I'd like to hear what you guys think. I personally will be calling her Liliana when it comes out, but for the purpose of this video, the card is Professor Onyx, so we're gonna be called, talking about Professor Onyx. I'm not really sure, maybe just call her Liliana Onyx now instead of Liliana Vess. Yeah, let's go with that. We'll call her Liliana Onyx going forward to, to balance this out. But I would totally understand if people wanted to call her um, Liliana or Professor Onyx, dependent on whatever. So, Professor Onyx, the card, was spoiled by Danny Trejo, who I didn't know um, did magic stuff, but apparently on his personal store sells signed copies of Trusty Machete, which I absolutely love. Uh, that's, uh, that's a really cute thing. But um, yeah, it was spoiled on Twitter by Danny Trejo, and the general reaction was... so. Talking about the card in general, uh, ignoring the uh, Thirst Trap art. <laughs> the Thirst Trap art. Yes, because I am apparently a woke 30-year-old woman now. Eh, not far off. Talking about the card itself, um, I think this is really cool. I enjoyed having the static abilities on, uh, on the Planeswalkers in War of the Spark. I, it sort of made them feel like they were actually had a presence instead of just being like, oh, look. Garrick is over there making wolves, or Oko is over there making elks. <laughs> it was, oh, Narset's here and I can't draw cards. Fuck Narset. Narset's a dick. 
Um, so yeah, that, that, that's, that's a fun thing. Uh, they were a little bit overpowered in War of the Spark because obviously first time for everything. Uh, they always hype it up a little bit too much, but you know, it was a cool idea. It was a cool mechanic. I think this one's actually a little bit more balanced. Um, obviously, we're going to be seeing Magecraft um, appear in the set fully. It seems to be worded uh, in a similar way to how Landfall was in Zendikar sets, where, you know, it's sort of like Magecraft is whenever you cast or copy a spell, something happens. And with Liliana, it is obviously a reference to um, to Tendrils of Agni, the old, ye old storm card, which is super cool. Um, I don't think we're going to be getting storm in the set, but because we're in a spell slinging set, it's all about casting spells, prefer um, instance sorcery specifically. I like it. It's it, it's very flavorful. It's very um, on brand. And seeing as she seems to be like the head of the uh, of the one of the two black house schools, can't call them houses. That's what was. Yeah, she seems to be hat. She seems to be uh, head of one of the two schools uh, uh, with black manor in them, either Witherbloom or Silver Quill. Um, my guess is going to be Silver Quill, just because the gothy, edgy art kids in that versus the um, rooting around in the dirt people of Witherbloom itself. It's Liliana's aesthetic to Mulgo with the first one. I'm doing it again. I'm switching between Fresh Ronix and Liliana. <laughs> Fuck you. I do what I want. Um, yeah, so she's obviously going to be head or a professor in that class. Um, so yeah, it, it fits. It fits the theme. I like it. I think it's very flavorful. I, I like the I like the magecraft mechanic. I think it's going to be well balanced. And I think looking back at it in five, ten years from now, people are going to think really fondly on the set uh, of Strixhaven in the same way that people think really fondly of Zendikar. Introducing this brand new. Um, something do something something happens mechanic which i always think is fun so yeah uh professor onyx is plus one uh it is cool it's always nice to have a good card draw option on your creature or on your planeswalker sorry um i think the putting everything that you don't want into the bin is also very thematic for liliana uh prior to uh going into hiding was most known as a necromancer you know uh, a lot of her cards did zombies, a lot of cards associated her with her, spoke about zombies and reanimation, apart from the first one, which was just sort of swamps. But then again, narrative direction, you do narrative dissonance, all that shit. Um, yeah, so, bleh. I think it's good. I, I, I like the fact that it synergizes previously with, um, pre with the previous versions of uh, Liliana or Professor Onyx, whoever you want to call. Liliana Onyx. Um, I think it works well with previous Liliana Planeswalker cards. Got round it, got round it, got round it. Um, and I think it's I think it's a, a good mechanic. Um, obviously, dumping a couple of things in your bin to reanimate them later with a different Liliana would be cool. Um, I am personally just looking to uptick this to get the card and then maybe uh, in standard call, passing Call of the Death Dweller to get out an art fiend's vessel and make a 5-5 demon just because mm, graveyard value. Ah, oh, so good. Uh, moving on to her minus three. Checks notes. In 1v1, um, minus, her minus three is obviously getting rid of your opponent's biggest creature, which is always good. Um, however, the important thing about this is as each opponent and it also is sacrifice. That's two very key phrases because obviously in multiplayer formats like Commander or Two-Headed Dragon, you're gonna get two creatures for the activation or three creatures or how many opponents you have. Um, and Sacrifice gets around uh, indestructible and all that stuff and like untargetable and shroud and hexproof, which is really good. Uh, every Voltron player ever has just cried a little bit because it means that as soon as Liliana hits the board, all of their work is gone. But yeah, so like that's good as well. You always want removal on a Planeswalker. It's um, it's a good solid thing to have. You want to protect yourself somewhere or another. You either want to create a, a, a dude to put in front of your planeswalker as you tick it up, or get rid of the biggest threat to the planeswalker. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy with that. And then let's talk about her ultimate, Liliana, Professor Onyx. I'm gonna keep flicking backwards and forwards between those. Eh, whatever. Um, yeah, so Professor Onyx's ultimate is a minus eight 
obviously you start at five loyalty, so it's gonna take a while for her to get there. Uh, you're either gonna to have to really lock down the board or take out the opponent's hands or um, fly under the radar if you don't have any way of boosting up her plus loyalties faster. You know, she's only got a plus one, and she starts at five, it's gonna take three turns to reach eight and then, well, the turn you cast her and then two further turns to reach eight and then a further turn to actually ultimate and go to the bin. But if you reach it, it's definitely gonna end the game um, shredding somebody's hand from, you know, basically a full grip to nothing is gonna be devastating uh, unless you're in commander and you've got something like Reliquary Tower out and you've got, you know, 18 cards in hand. Getting rid of seven of those probably isn't gonna be that big of a deal. But the bit I'm most interested in is repeat this process six times because that means da -da 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 -da, we get to take another cross off of our bingo board, which is sick. Um, I did not expect to get a two for this early in my bingo game. I certainly didn't expect to get um, a two for, you know, before we've even technically started. Uh, today's date is the 23rd. That's when I'm recording it. It was obviously dropped yesterday, but I had a life and I live in the UK. Uh, so I can't just set up a recording. I have to actually do things, which is part of the reason why the house is a mess, because I don't do things. But yeah, so um, obviously it's great for my bingo game. That's actually something that I'm really pleased with. Uh, I just, it makes, makes, uh, makes caring about spoiler season slightly different this time around, which is a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, no, I think, I think as a, as a game, mechanic uh, the ultimate is definitely good unless you're against somebody who's always drawing far too many cards and then you're sort of like well get rid of some of them and they were really like yeah i've been to seven islands um but you know uh, what i imagine happening with this is you're going to be causing discard through uh, like skull raid and stuff like that in standard at least and in later formats in a blue black deck, maybe with an asset and a will, who knows? Um, but yeah, like completely emptying the hand before you manage to get Liliana up to, before you manage to get Professor Onyx up to eight and then hitting a minus and binning everything. Uh, I think it's gonna work quite synergistically um, and it's probably gonna end up, you know, taking somewhere between, uh, let's say nine to 15 life on average. Um, yeah, nine to 15 life on average and leaving your opponents empty handed or if they're really, really, really desperate to hold onto their cards, they maybe go down like by 18 life. And we're talking a six mana plane talk here with three turns before you hit the ultimate. Chances are they've had a few chips down anyway. So they're either gonna be at a point where they have to completely discard the hand just to stay alive or they're going to be at a low enough life total where it doesn't really matter how many cards they have in their hand. Um, you know, if they if they have six cards in their hand, but you hit them a few times with say, I don't know, an uh, Archfiend, uh, a five five demon token. Um, yeah, so if if you uh, if you hit them a few times with a five five demon token, it doesn't really matter how many cards they have in hand. They're gonna have to discard all of them because otherwise they're just gonna die. Um, so yeah, that's that's my thoughts on uh, Professor Onyx. Uh, two bingo box ticks for me, well done. Uh, and the other card we got was Kazmina, who is a three mana, th yep, three mana value, um, blue green mythic planeswalker, which we haven't had any problems with whatsoever. So yeah, that's going to go fine. Now honestly, I just I I don't think Kazmina is going to be a problem. Obviously, she synergizes very well with plays and walkers, but doesn't hit the bingo card, so I'm not gonna talk about it. Bye! Well,